this morning, I'm going to be continuing our thoughts on first things, first things. And we're going to be sharing with you uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10 and 11. Reading from the NIV, verses 10 and 11 in chapter 9. Praise the Lord. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Well, first, there's a difference between your source and your means. There's a big difference between that. Your bank account, is that your source? No. What about your abilities? What about your job? What is your source? God is your source. Amen. God gives you what you have. Not your job, not the government, not your IRA. God, now those may be the means. Those may be the means God uses to bless you, but they are not your source. If we want our wells to flow with fresh blessings, then we need to trust God and obey His Word. God is our source. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He is the creator of all things. He really is. He's, you know, he said, Job, he said, Job, you ought to read, that's a great book. He said, Job, I don't remember you being there when I held the oceans in the palm of my hand. <laughs> he said, Job, I don't remember you being there when I fixed barometric pressure and made the lightning come down. Where were you at, Job? He got very sarcastic with Job because Job was asking some pretty tough questions like, this isn't fair. And God said, I don't remember you being there, Job. God is the creator of all things. He is your source. He is your source. The silver and the gold is mine, says the Lord. Bill Gates, <laughs> you think he's got something? You can starve when Bill Gates does but if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you will eat when Bill Gates is starving. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is. It is His will. God can give more wealth, and He gives it to whomever He desires. In Chronicles, it says, Both riches and honor come from you, O God. God is the source of all good gifts. When you believe this, I want to tell you, now this is, that when you believe this, when you accept it, it will change your life. Philippians 4.19 says, My God will meet all of your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now you stop and think about it. Don't just let this fly on by. Stop and think about it. The choice is yours. Are you, Deuteronomy, he said, I set before you death and life. Choose life. But you can choose. Salvation is heaven or hell. And God is calling you. And he says, choose heaven Choose life abundantly. Choose. The choice is yours. 
There's the law of the harvest. The way that we handle money is ultimately a spiritual decision. It is. Every farmer knows he must sow seed. He must sow seed if he wants to harvest a crop. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. He says, as long as the earth endures, there'll be summer and winter, day and night, and the harvest will never cease. This applies to the physical as well as the spiritual realm. In Galatians 6, I believe it's verse 7, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Do you see it? That's what you're going to reap. You're going to reap what you sow. The disciples couldn't cast, a, couldn't cast a demon out of a demonic boy. And Jesus said, if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this demon, be thou removed. Be thou removed. Praise the Lord. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, Paul says, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Hmm, what about that? Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. If we trust God, if we believe His Word, then God will bring a harvest. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but God will bring a harvest into your life. Praise the Lord. Should we expect a harvest? I mean, should we? Does the farmer expect a harvest when he plants his crop? Does he expect a harvest? You say, well, I'm... Farmer says, well, I'm going to plant 10 pounds of seed. We'll see what happens. No. A farmer says, I'm going to plant 10,000 pounds of seed. I'm going to water it. I'm going to weed it. I'm going to do my part. And I'm going to trust God to give the increase. And that farmer goes out every day and he looks and he's looking for the increase. He's looking for the blessings. Why? Because the farmer expects that he will receive a harvest based upon his planting. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God has promised rewards to you and I. He will give unto your life. Uh, you know... Matthew in chapter 6, verse 4, I don't know if I gave him that one. He says, when you give to the Father, give it in secret. You don't want a big thing and say, stand up and say, bless God, I'm giving a thousand dollars to missions. And everybody in the church applauds, yay, he's given a thousand. Jesus said, you've got your reward. You, you've already got it. But let him give in secret with no one knowing and let God who sees in secret give you a reward. Hey, there's another reward. Jesus, in case you didn't know it, one third of all the parables dealt with money. You thought, like, why is the church talking about money? Jesus talked about it. One third of all parables dealt with money. Jesus says, Matthew 6, 19, He says, lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. No, He said, do not store up for yourselves where moths, thieves break in and steal. He said, 
do some. Now, let me, I told them this Wednesday night in our study. A guy's living in the, during the Civil War. He's living in the South, but his permanent home's in the North. And he's storing up a bunch of Confederate dollars. But he thinks, wait a minute. The North is going to eventually win this war. I better trade all this Confederate money for Union money because the Confederate money is not going to be worth a penny when it's all said and done. He said, I better invest in things that are permanent. What if you wind up with a ton of, con I got some Confederate bonds. I've got some novelty items, bonds, Confederate. It's not worth a penny. But the union money was worth something. That's just a small example of why do you hoard and keep and, and gather up as much as you can in this world when if you'll send it to heaven, it will be a permanent reward where God can bless you. He can minister to you. You know, I got a secret for you. There are no pockets in the hearse. There are no pockets in a hearse. You don't take one penny. I don't care what you have. You can be as rich as Rockefeller. You know how you leave in this world? The same way you came in without one penny and you're leaving pretty much naked and it's just you and what you've given to God. God says, Jesus says, give it to God and let God bless you in a great way. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. What, what is all these other things? Food, shelter, clothing, good things that you give unto the Lord. Many Christians just can't, they can't accept this principle in their lives. They'll trust God for their salvation They'll believe God, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according. I believe God on that. But then you say, God says, trust me with your finances. And they go, ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Fear. Fear. It's one thing to say you trust God. It's another thing to trust God to provide your rent, your daily needs, and to live by faith. When you're out of work, when the bills are coming due, is that the time to say, okay, I'm out of work. Bills are coming due. I'm going to tighten up. No, I have, a, I have a word for you. That's the exact opposite of common sense. When you're out of work, the bills are coming due, give to God. When what's in your hand is not enough to meet your need, it becomes your seed. It, the law of the harvest. The law of the harvest. This is, this is the time to sow seeds of faith. I'm not preaching prosperity doctrine. I'm not preaching, oh, give for this handkerchief and you'll get... Five times back, no. You give with the right motive because you love God and you love Him. You get in His kingdom and let the circle begin to go. Can I, can I borrow your testimony, Saul? Just a little piece of it. Saul gave an awesome testimony last Sunday night. Saul is a dedicated Christian. Uh, he's come to us from Zambia. He's, his family, dedicated Christians. He's a praying man. He's been here for our prayer meetings on uh, Tuesday nights with the men. 
Uh, he loves God. His testimony about how he sends money to his mother. He sends money for his nephew to go to college and to live. And he, 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 said, he said, man, I was sending, he was sending a ton of money home and he's trying to live here. He wasn't tithing. And he said he was, his word is he was troubled in his spirit. Why? He knew something wasn't right. But he's troubled in his spirit. He was doing the best he could. And last year, we preached a series like similar to this that we do every year. And he said, okay, God, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm giving this to you. And he put something in the offering. Well, that week, he got a call from his nephew. He said, don't send me any more money. I got a full scholarship. They're paying my living expenses and everything. Don't send any more money. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you, God is faithful and you cannot outgive God. Amen. Let me hurry up very quickly. I want to speed it up. Reward number one says you will be made rich in every way. That's material and spiritual. God's grace and His mercy, all of the material blessings. Why do we, to continue giving, to be blessed? You see, God says, and what we read here in Corinthians, God says, give to me. Do you see this principle? God says, give to me so that I can give it back to you so that you can give even more, so I can give it back to you, so you can give even more, and it becomes a circular, it becomes a circular thing going around and around. He, it's not that you can get rich, but so you can give and you can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. That's what he's saying here. Give, and you will be rich. Oh, I've got more notes I'm going to skip over. Abraham was rich. He was rich. If you don't believe he's rich, Sodom and Gomorrah got captured by the kings. They were carrying Lot. Abraham didn't care about Sodom and Gomorrah, but they had his nephew Lot. And he said, oh man, we've got to go rescue Lot. Abraham took his servants his servants and went and defeated the kings and let them go and brought Lot back home. The king of Sodom said, Abraham, I'm going to give you all this wealth. And Abraham said, I'm not even going to take a shoelace from you lest you claim that you have made me rich. I don't want even a shoelace. David gave a hundred million dollars to the building of the temple. When you can give that much money, you're doing pretty good. Solomon had stables that were plated, horse stables that were plated with gold. I think he's doing pretty well. I think he's doing pretty well. Reward number two, you will receive more than you give. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken up, running over. Do, do you get that? He said, you ever buy a bag of potato chips and they're all, you buy a new bag and you say, wait a minute, I only got this many. That's because they've been shaken up. And God says, I'm going to keep filling it up. I'm going to keep filling it up till it's running over and you can't even contain the blessing. That's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to bless you in a great way. Give love. Give love. Do you, do you, want, to, do you want to be friends? The Bible said show yourself to be friendly. Do you give a smile? Oh, I can't give a smile, Pastor. Pastor. Things are so bad. 
in my life. No, they're not. Give a smile and you'll get a smile. Amen. Give love, give blessings, give friendship, and you will receive. For with the same measure that you give, you got to give me a few more minutes. I can't skip over all this. With the same measure that you give, it will be given unto you. When you're up here and, you're, and the offering basket comes by and you say, hmm, see if I got a dollar. Oh, yeah, I got a dollar. Good. I can put a dollar in the offering. I could say a lot about that. <laughs> but that's an eyedropper. The offering comes by, you take your eyedropper and you go, ding. And then later on, you're in desperate need. Maybe it's healing, maybe it's wisdom, maybe it's some need. And you're saying, oh God, I need you right now. And God takes his eyedropper and goes, ding. And you say, did I feel something? Okay, God help me. God says with the same measure that you give, it's going to be given back to you. And that's, what, that's what's happening with us. The third reward, he says, you will receive, you will receive a better blessing. Acts 20 and 35 said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. My kids at Christmas, man, Eden's already making a list. When I was a kid, I, had a, I, I saw everything on Saturday mornings back then, and I was writing down, hey, I want this and I want this. You know what? Becky asked me this year, said, what do you want for Christmas? I said, I don't want anything. She said, come on, I got to get you something. I said, I don't want anything. I don't need anything. All I want to do is buy the kids and my mom, and the grandkids, I'd much rather give it to them. I don't need anything. As you get older, you learn it's more blessed to give than to receive. What a, how many of you would like to be in partnership with God? Would you like to be in partnership with God? Now, come on. You want to be in partnership with the devil? No. You want to be in partnership with God? You want to say, here's my partner right up here. I'm partnering with God. What, what a blessing when you're partnering. Giving becomes an opportunity. It does. Giving frees you from the grip of this world. It frees you from the clutches it frees you from all of the things that are gripping and clutching. And, and it says, you're free. What, did we sing a song? Did the choir sing a song? I'm free. I'm free. You want to be free? That's the way you're free. You become free when you give to God. You become free when you give to God. You know, there's a guy in the desert who was thirsting to death. And he saw a little hut, and he said, maybe they got some water. And he was panting, and he was so hot and tired, and he opens the door, and there's a glass of water sitting there. And he says, bless God, thank you, Jesus. Somebody's left a glass of water in this little hut out here. And he comes in, and he gets the water, and then there's a note. And it says, this water is to prime the pump out back. Prime it and then replace the water. He says, well, I got to drink this water. But said, maybe I should prime the pump and see what comes. It's just one glass. But maybe the one last glass I've got would prime the pump and cause it to give, give, and give, and then replace the water, and I could drink. And he decided he would replace, he would use it to prime the pump. I'm leaving out a ton. 
but I'm wrapping this up. Wrapping it up. You know, there's three kinds of givers. There's the flint giver, the sponge giver, and the honeycomb. The flint giver, if we want to take up some offering, got a special need, want to sign for the church, you have to hammer, hammer. Sometimes you get a little spark. You get a little something, but you're hammering on that thing. Then you got the sponge. You got to squeeze. I'm, I'm not squeezing, but you got to squeeze. Then you have the honeycomb giver where the sweetness just oozes out. It just oozes out. It just keeps oozing out. You don't have to do anything. It gets all over you. It covers you up. You're just full of sweet honey and blessings as it covers you up. The honeycomb. That's, I wish I had time. I'm not. The honeycomb giver. That's the one when you say it's time to take the offering. The one that jumps up and says, bless God, we can give to God from the first fruits, uh, from the first things. Uh, we can obey his word and give to him. Bless God, we ought to have a standing ovation for the offering because we get to worship God with our giving and with our tithes. Uh, bless God, that is a miracle, that is a miracle in our lives. Praise God. That is a miracle in our lives. God is asking you. He's, he's just asking. He's just asking. He's saying, are you going to take me at my word? Are you going to take me at my word? Hi, I'm Pastor Joe. I'd like to invite you on Palm Sunday, March the 25th, and then on Easter Sunday, April the 1st, to a two-part musical drama entitled, The Tomb is Empty Now, performed by our Parkway Choir and Drama Team. Don't miss this special performance.